Hello everyone, today I want to make a little video going over network tunneling. So why would we even want a network tunnel in the first place? So let's say we gain access to a web server using an RCE exploit, and now we want to do penetration testing on the local host database server. Um, how would we do that from our attacking machine um, using all of our normal tools, right? So this is where tunneling gets involved. Some pros and cons of SSH tunneling real quick. SSH is typically installed on a lot of Linux-based systems and even some Windows-based systems. Cons are firewall restrictions, so some networks block SSH traffic, limiting its use in certain environments. The pros and cons of Chisel are Chisel actually utilizes HTTP and HTTPS, um, making it effective in bypassing firewalls that block other types of traffic. It's also cross-platform. Chisel ha is available on multiple platforms. It's built in Go, so it has a lot of flexibility. Some cons, however, are you actually do have to put that chisel binary on the victim computer along with a copy on your attacking computer. So now let's get into a scenario where we uh, brute force the SSH user and we now start attacking a local website running on localhost. So I'm going to use Patinator to pretty much brute force this SSH server using the username Ubuntu. You can see that we are able to find a valid password, so let's go ahead and log in. SSH, Ubuntu, and then at the IP, and then we're going to pass that password we found. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen, run ID real quick, and also let's use netstat to enumerate what services are running on localhost. So we can do grep and then 127 to find all services on localhost, and you can see that there is something running on port 8080. So we're going to utilize SSH-L, the dash L option is for local port forwarding. We're, then we're going to pass the port that it's going to be listening on our attacking computer. So basically it's saying, you know, hey, SSH, please listen on port 8080 on my machine. And then when you get traffic there, send it back to the victim computer on local ho localhost port 8080. Then all we need to do after that is specify the username and the IP address of the SSH server. Then we can finally log in and it's done. So if we actually pop back into our browser real quick and go to our localhost 8080, we're then presented with this website. Now this is the same website I have on my localhost on my Vuln server. And now as hackers, this is great because now we're able to run scans on our victim computer's localhost services. So I went ahead and started a Nikto scan. And let's go ahead and pop into Wireshark on the victim server to see what's going on. So we can see some web requests coming in pretty frequently. And immediately, um, you can start to notice a pattern, right? So there's these two SSH requests happening between 64, which is the SSH server, and then the 110, which is my attacking computer, right? So that's the SSH tunneling. And then right after is that HTTP request to the local service, and then it's immediately sent back um, over the tunnel again. So this is very easy to detect um, compared to Chisel, which is more designed for um, firewall evasion. So now for this next scenario where we're using Chisel, um, we're not going to have SSH. And just for the lab's sake, um, just assume we are able we were able to perform an RCE exploit on our victim computer, allowing us to start a reverse backdoor. So that's where this lab starts with a reverse backdoor connection. So now let's get into how we do so Chisel. So um, in this web page, I have the GitHub repository pulled up. You want to go ahead and scroll down and use the source install. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Now I already have it installed, so it's not going to output anything, but it should take a little bit and uh, spew out some lines. So we're gonna, what we're going to do now is we're going to say locate chisel grep bin. That's going to show us where chisel is installed. And let's copy this to our download. So we want to do copy that file and let's just put it in our current directory, which is downloads. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start a Python 3 web server. So python 3-m http.server. Now this is going to, um, if we actually open up our web browser, 68.0.8000, oh, whoops, 110, and then port 8000. And then we want to pass, this is linps because it's in my downloads too. But if we just pass chisel, you can see that it's hosting that file. So what we can do now is we can copy this. We can go to our Vuln server. And what we can run is we can run curl, and then we're going to paste that URL, and we'll do output chisel. So now, you can see if we can run it. And we can. So we, we're able to execute chisel. So now let's set this chisel up, this chisel instance, 
up as a client. So we want to just uh, copy this and we want to say <clears throat> client. Then we want to pass the IP address and port of the chisel server we're going to be setting up in a moment. So the chisel server is going to be running on this IP and port. We then want to pass R for reverse because we want it to be a reverse tunnel. Then we want to pass 9090. This is going to be the local port that our attacking server is listening on for the connection, just like before. If we go to localhost 9090, it's going to pretty much tunnel our traffic to localhost 8080, which we specify right after. So the localhost 8080, that's going to be the victim computer connection that we are tunneling. And then the reverse 99, that's the port we're sending it to. So a little bit different than last time. Go ahead and press enter. Now it's going to fail a bunch of times because we didn't set up the server yet. So let's go back to our downloads and let's do chisel, chisel, server, reverse, port, 80. So you can see it's listening. Hopefully this didn't time out. It's trying again in 12 seconds. So in around 12 seconds, we should get a response. And you can see now it's set up and it's listening. And if we open up our browser again, and go to localhost 9090, you can see that same web page up once again. So now let's scan it using Nikto and open up the Wireshark traffic to see what's happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open up a new terminal here and I'm gonna do Nikto dash host. So I'm gonna paste that URL and let's go ahead and check Wireshark out. So you can see web traffic is already flowing in. It looks very similar as before, right? But instead of the SSH protocol, this time it's using TCP. You can see the destination port is 8080, which is our chisel server. And if we actually follow this packet, you can see that it is encrypted, which is really nice. Chisel works by setting its data through HTTP or HTTPS like we talked about earlier, which is the same protocol as uses everyday web traffic. So since most firewalls are designed to allow this type of web traffic through, Chisel is able to blend in more easily. It doesn't stick out as much compared to SSH tunneling. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one.